Dr. Mel Andabaki is an educator and researcher, formerly at the University of South Florida. She is also a founding member of the Friends of Human Rights, which began shortly after the arrest of Dr. Sami al Harian in 2003. Since that time, she has focused on calling attention to the current wave of preemptive prosecutions and the dangers of the racist and illegal Patriot Act. She has toured the country educating the public about the erosions of civil liberties since 9-11 and screened the documentary USA versus al Harain more than 60 times on campuses, churches, mosques, and community centers. She, is a, she serves as a member of the board of directors in the steering committee of the National Coalition to Protect Civil Freedoms and as an interim director of the Education and Outreach Committee. Oh, Ken, there's a lot of prosecutions here, uh, preemptive prosecutions for thought crimes and manufactured charges. I'm just going to, just a sample, this is a very small sample of this happened to catch my attention. Let's see here. Okay, so Samia Hamude was one of Sammy's co-defendants. He was a student at the University of South Florida where Sammy was a tenured professor. And he was uh, totally acquitted, but he spent another six months in jail, and he was then deported with his family back to Palestine. And Hatem Paris is another one of the co-defendants, also not guilty of terrorism. He spent three and a half years in the CMU, and a little longer than that in jail. Oops, went too far. The person I just skipped over. Let me go back. Let me try to go back to him. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going the wrong. Let me just skip him. <laughs> okay, this is the Holy Land case. A lot of you have probably heard about this. The, the Muslim charity and the, and the crime they were accused of is giving money to hospitals in Palestine. And they were convicted of that. This is one of the founders, and he got 65 years, which he's serving now. Boy. This is his family. This is his youngest son about a year and a half ago as they were partying. His son ran over to give him a hug, and this was against the rules, so he didn't have any contact with them at all for a year and a half. It's another founder, of a co-founder of the Holy Land Foundation. And another one, it's 15 years. And Sagmir Abu Ali was a, a case that... Uh, he was an American, he was a student in Saudi Arabia. He got uh, arrested over there in Saudi Arabia and tortured. Under torture, he confessed to many crimes. One of them was uh, planning to assassinate uh, George Bush, who was the president at the time. Uh, he was brought back here to trial, and the fact that it was a confession um, obtained under torture had nothing to do with anything. He was convicted, initially got life in prison, and that was in, initially got 30 years in prison, and that was changed to life. And he is in the Supermax in Florence, Colorado, which is a very, very restrictive prison, like solitary confinement. And this is Sharman's brother. You've heard about him. Yeah. And Fahad Hashmi was, you might have heard of him. He was American. He, had a, he was going to school in England. He had an apartment there. He let a friend stay in his apartment for two weeks. The friend had a suitcase that had some raincoats in it and uh, waterproof socks. And later he allegedly gave those to Al-Qaeda members. So for that, Fahad went to jail for almost four years under uh, special administrative measures, very harsh, very harsh conditions. Um, and when he came to trial, he, didn't, he did not go to trial. He just reached a plea agreement and he got sentenced to 15 years. He's now in Supermax in Florence, Colorado, also. Uh, Tarek Shah, I think you'll be hearing more about him later. He's an example of an entrapment case, because there's a lot of those now. So you're going to hear from Steve talking about him. So I'm not going to say anything about him now, but this is what he looks like. And Dr. Siddiqui is another really horrifying case. Of, I'm not going to go into details because I don't have time. But she was a... Um, U.S. educated neuroscientist, and she was studying learning disabilities. And her and her three young children went back to Pakistan to visit the family, and she just disappeared for five years. And it turned out she had been in Bagram Air Force Base, and she'd been tortured there. And um, the crime was, I'm not, I don't have time to go into all the details, but she was convicted of a 
a crime with no evidence and sentenced to 86 years. And she's in uh, Harrisville, Texas, I believe now. Is that here? In solitary confinement, yeah. Yeah. And uh, there are the, I said, this is just the tip of the iceberg, and it's just some that I happen to select. And Project Salam, which you'll hear more about in a minute, <laughs> uh, they've compiled a lot of cases, so here's just a few of them. And I pulled this off of their website about two years ago. I think there's about 400 names on here at the time, that's what was on there. And Sammy's up there. Atoms up there. <laughs> Again, looking forward to end on a positive note. Um, the importance of community. I really liked what uh, what he said about that. But Yusef Magahed was another Tampa case. He was a student at the same university where I taught and where Sammy was a tenured professor. And he and an Egyptian national who was a student, they went on uh, they went on a summer vacation before school started, and they got stopped for speeding. And they had uh, homemade fireworks in their trunk. And they looked Arab, so they got arrested. <laughs> so he got tried for terrorism, but he did go to trial, and he had a lot of community support. And also the media had some media support in this case, but he went to trial and he won. And the government, of course, didn't give up. They rearrested him like right away and put him in an immigration facility. Again, he went to trial. And again, we were there, a lot of community support for that. And, uh, this judge, for the first time ever, that someone was acquitted in both of those courts in this country. So there is hope if we, if we all stand together. Uh, a book I just read that I recommend to everybody is The New Jim Crow. And the line I got out of there is, it's all of us or none of us. So I urge you, these trials that are coming up, go to them, pack the courtrooms. The hearings that are coming up, because it makes a difference. I know it does, and the judges in these cases probably commented on us even. So. So anyway, thank you very much and thank you for being here. So.